Good morning, my friends. Well, it's Memorial Day weekend here in the United States. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Memorial Day originally started out in 1869, uh, four years after the Civil War ended. And it was called Remembrance Day and uh, Decoration Day. I'm sorry, it was called Decoration Day. And uh, there was a major, major general who wanted to start this uh, as a way to remember the soldiers who uh, died in the Civil War. And it wasn't until, um, it was something like 1971 that it actually became a federal holiday. And uh, like most federal holidays, they've kind of been, you lose the date, which was actually, I think, May 30th. So this year it actually is falling on the day that it was meant to be and now we make it a three-day weekend so you know we're all into convenience but anyway okay that's the, that's the long and short of it I just wanted to bring you out here this is uh, Juicy Fruit Island that I really just started um, I have to look back but I think it was uh, somewhere February or March and I planted uh, these are Asian pears I have one at each end I got from Bottoms Nursery. They were $20 a piece. I had some problems with them, but uh, this one has been replaced, and I bought two. I have one at this end and one, the original of the two, some uh, is at the other end. Um, and then in the center, I have a uh, Florida Prince peach tree, and nothing has, uh, nothing has fruit on it. It's, you know, as they say that with a fruit tree it's um what is it the first year it sleeps uh the second year it creeps and then the third year it leaps so uh this i uh, we're in our we're in our first year so i'm not expecting anything uh this spring or uh, really maybe next spring i might get one piece of fruit but i wanted to show you my tomatoes these are a principale bergesi tomato uh, the fruit is supposed to be between one and two inches in size and uh, it's supposed to have a very nice little fruit to it so I am hoping that um, I have 12 plants here which I really I staggered them so that I could get them in and I'm kind of sorry I did that because they are so tight and I don't have an overhead uh, way of keeping them up. I've been, you know, using bamboo stakes and what have you to try and keep them in an upright position. And also I keep trimming underneath the bottom to uh, keep them up off the uh, soil so that there's no splashing. And I'm finding I'm getting a lot less problems with um, either a leaf miner or any kind of um, uh, fungus or what have you. You can see I'm getting a few few weeds here from my area but not not bad and I did plant sweet alyssum anything that you can plant that has um, a, a really um, I don't want to use a pungent but a strong odor that will um, kind of retard the abilities of the predators to find your tomato plants I think is the way I want to say it so marigolds are probably one of the best things that will uh, uh, distract uh, anything flying over, and you know they they smell that and they go, oh yeah, right, pyrethrins. We don't we don't want to even stop there. Just keep on moving. So, uh, but I wanted to show you some of these tomatoes and how lovely they are. They're just, I mean, these guys are just. Look at how laden they are. They are heavy. At all, I mean, I, I must have a couple, at least a couple hundred out here. And I see this one. Let me come in from behind. I can see that guy just starting to turn right over there. But the one I've been eyeing is this third guy in the row. And these tomatoes are just really pretty. I'll use my thumb as a my hand is to show you the, the size. I don't know if I can get it. Maybe from the other side I can get in there, but I can see I've got more. And I can't wait to say to Rick, well, you're gonna have to go out and pick tomatoes. 
because he's been pick he's, he's really been helping me he's been picking the everglades and boy they're they're kind of a they're, they're laborious there's another couple that are just starting to turn uh, my prediction uh, about a month and a half ago was that uh, by June 1st I would be picking tomatoes and I think I'm pretty pretty spot on this is the uh, 28th of, of May and so here's my other peach tree I, or, I'm sorry pear tree uh, this is an Asian pear it only requires a hundred hours or less uh, or, or I'm sorry, a hundred hours of chill time. So I really am hoping that we uh, have that this coming year. That's not bad. You know, under I think it's under 35 or 40 is what they consider a chill time. But you can see I planted. I had some extra uh, Principality Bergesi, so I planted two here, and I planted a couple down at the other end. But I wanted to show you through the yard and just let you see what's going on. Um, I have lots of sweet potatoes that I planted. Just, you know, the little slips that I've been uh, keeping, uh, taking off my little, one little sweet potato. So I've got three, six, and then the nine over there. Uh, this is some palladiums. They come back in that section every year. And uh, the marigold, I'm um, sorry, the mango that I planted, I had two of them from seed, and it's an Adolfo uh, mango. It's supposed to be a very sweet. Uh, this one I transplanted from over where I have my kale, or had my kale, I, I transplanted it here. And the kale was just uh, keeping it, it was growing it, growing so high around it that I think it dwarfed the whole thing. Uh, more marigolds. This is a Brazilian spinach, and boy, if anybody can get their hands on Brazilian spinach, if they want it as a ground cover, it's it's killer here. Uh, amaryllis. The amaryllis have finished blooming for the year. That's it. I've got them in different places just to keep those bulbs growing because the bulbs with the greens, you know, the greens are providing the photosynthesis, and so... Uh, the bulbs themselves are getting bigger, and the bigger the bulb, the better the bloom, the bigger the bloom, or I might get two or three blooms out of it. So, um, this is some moringa. I just did a, a video on uh, planting moringa seeds, and uh, moringa is very a very healthful plant. You can, uh, you can eat it raw. You can just pick these off and use them in your salad. You can let them dry. Uh, you can put them in a dehydrator if you want, or you can just let it air dry and make a powder out of it and take the powder. Um, you can, I'm trying to think of some of the other things. You can use it in a smoothie, um, salad, uh, but it's high in uh, protein and it's high in all sorts of vitamins. Uh, if you're interested, I, like I said, I just did a video on it if you want to go back and find the health benefits of it. So uh, that seems that one seems to be growing quite well. That was from seed. That one did come from a seed. Um, I have some nice pentas that are that are coming back, and the pentas seem to uh, seed themselves. They they will drop their seeds, and I'll find them just everywhere. Um, I have a few sunflowers that I wanted to just start dotting those in. More uh, Brazilian spinach. I, I like my garden to look like someone just came along and threw a bunch of everything down and uh, you know only the strong survive those those who come up uh, have a chance to live and you know good for them uh, this crepe myrtle as you can see it will uh, keep sending out suckers and I keep cutting them off and they keep coming back and this is uh, the third year for this might be the fourth year and it's the start from out in the front yard I have a, um, a crepe myrtle that is quite uh, well established if you wonder what these are they're lichens l-i-c-h-e-n I suggest you look it up if you want a really good uh, definition and they adhere to the 
tree. It's a fungus of sorts. They don't hurt the tree at all, but they do add some interest to it. Uh, more sunflowers. I have uh, one is called a, uh, a, a, a Suntastic. Uh, they were from um, uh, Burpees. And the other is called Ms. Mars. And they are the type of, um, they're a mauve colored, and they're the type of sunflower that when they come up, it's not just one single stalk. They uh, branch out, so they're great if you want to make arrangements, which I do. I'm a retired florist, so, you know, we never, we never stop designing. Uh, this is the other uh, mango uh, that I brought from seed. And what a difference. This has been, you know, left out and... You can see the stalk is much hardier on this. But isn't it interesting that the top leaves always look like they're just, um, like somebody took a torch to them or something. And, and this is, seems to be, uh, it's normal for it. So uh, I stopped worrying and just went, okay, <laughs> go for it. A uh, couple small plumeria trees. You guys know that I have the big plumeria and that, you know, they're, they're beautiful and this is their time to come out and be glorious. Rick has been getting up there and spraying them with neem oil for me to try and uh, alleviate our problems with rust. And if you saw my winter, uh, the freeze that we had, we had two freezes in February. And most of my tea plants, which are also known as cordelin, uh, they almost, they just kind of like died back. And I cut off quite a few of the tops and tried to salvage what I could. And as you can see, they're really making a comeback. And the spathophyllum, also known as a peace lily. Uh, I planted them under here because even though I get sun coming from this direction, uh, it will provide, these uh, trees provide enough shade so that it, they are very healthy and enough light though that they will bloom because spathophyllum will grow total shade but they don't send out as many blooms. And I've got a few things going on down here on the side, you know, my tumbler that I've really kind of fallen in love with. Uh, these are the two Chicago Hardy figs that I bought and they seem to have survived their uh, being sent through the mail. Uh, a friend gave me this one and I thought it had died, but it, uh, the leaves are hanging on, so I just stuck it in a pot. I've got a few other things just on there, just in case anybody dies off, I can replace it. I'm sure you've all become familiar with my hibiscus, and the funny thing about these hibiscus, they were like little lollipops, and I bought them in a, uh, the dead zone at Lowe's for five dollars and I keep cutting them back and cutting them back and the funny thing about these hibiscus is well this looks like it's going to uh, drop its bloom but as soon as the sun comes out it will open like this one and provide this beautiful bloom all the ones on the top will, you know, will open up and they'll... But here's, here's always the star of the show. And of course, now that we have Juicy Fruit Lane, let me get beyond here and, and come back. Now that I have Juicy Fruit Lane, I can't really stand across and see it as much. But uh, this is a Blue Nile Agapanthus. And I mean, the blooms on this thing are just incredible. There have to be close to 20 blooms on it. And let me just show you. Isn't this a hummingbird's delight? I mean, can you imagine? The bees come along here. It's still pretty early in the morning, so I've not seen. But the bees and butterflies come along. This is a this is a grouping of a. There's probably about uh, probably about ten plants in there, and uh, I have to keep. From underneath, I have to keep uh, raising up the level because we can't mow past here. But boy, you take down here, you just take a few of these, and you know, two or th three of them in a, in, a, in a vase is just a beautiful display. 
and pull off some of the bottom leaves and uh, there you've got your greens and what a, what a dramatic arrangement. Over here I'm afraid my uh, Japanese, giant Japanese mustard is really, somebody is in there eating it and I haven't really been uh, picking it as much so they're, they're having a heyday. Uh, I've got uh, sweet potato vines from last year that have come back so I started building a little trellis and I ran out of uh, my sticks so I have to probably go and buy something. Oh my goodness. Peggy's going to buy something? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know what a novel thought. I want to show you something interesting. Now look at the color. All of these agapanthus came from the same source and they have thrown off pups and I pull those pups and I plant them somewhere else. So this whole bunch is probably 12, 14 years old. And this one is probably only about four years old. And you can see that it has started to divide and multiply. Let me just show you down in there. Can you see this? And they'll send off runners. And there's one plant. And here's another one behind it. And if I leave it go, then they'll start going in all different directions. But look at the difference in color. Same plants. Parent plants. Child plants. But wait. <laughs> if you get onto any other one in my entire yard, this is the only one that came out in this color. So I do have something in the yard that's eating. And I don't know what it is, and I have yet to find it. But I'm sure it's it's a little worm of some sort, but it's going through here like, like it's really hungry. So I built this little, another little teepee here so that I could get my uh, sweet potato vines to come up. Here's the other hibiscus. Again, it, the hibiscus here are funny. The, they will send off some suddenly the leaves will get a little yellow and then I will have like a flush of growth and then the leaves underneath will so um, I used to get upset by that but now I just kind of take it as that this must be the way life is here's some newer agapanthus and as you can see they are actually much lighter they're light like the parent More pentas, again volunteers. This whole section, any of the pentas you see are just volunteers. No one was planted. But I do put down cardboard and I do put down grass clippings and that's the only thing and they are holding back the weeds so much more than I ever used to be able to keep up with. This is my new spot and it is, this is where I had the kale just growing in mass and uh, we probably got about 12, 14 pounds of kale off of that. And it, it was delicious. It was just delicious. Uh, the other moringa that froze back at winter and has come back again. Uh, the tea plants behind it, I really, I just, they were all hacked off right down low. So whatever is sprouting is all new growth. Uh, these are uh, the bicolored suntastic uh, sunflowers and the Ms. Mars. They're from uh, Baker's Creek. And then this is the pigeon pea, which I just took a whole bunch in and, and harvested. I wanted to leave these on to go ahead and dry more. If you've ever had pigeon peas, they're delicious. I won't walk down the whole way, but down there you can see I still have the Everglades tomatoes they're sending out probably close to two pounds a week and I keep thinking I should tear them off uh, tear them down and start again but it's hard to do that whenever they're they're so productive and I think that's probably about it I think I've shown you everything in the yard and uh, oh I guess this is starting to bloom this is the crepe myrtle that's um, a cranberry crepe myrtle 
it's a little bit more of a um, what do I want to say uh, it's not as common as the other crepe myrtle and of course the uh, Florida um, red maple in the center so uh, that's it kind of from my world this is over the fence you can see it's kind of like a wild Queen Anne's lace and it blooms out there and we get lots and lots and lots of pollinators flying through so I'll leave you with that happy Memorial Day uh, decoration day whatever you want wish to call it I hope you have a peaceful one and that you subscribe and ring the bell and come back to see me again soon. Take care, everybody, and remember to garden what you've got. Bye-bye.